Credits code in the day to give the keyboard a punch. Wow. Then cross, correlate, and a break for some lunch. Wow. Correlate, tabulate, process, and screen. Wow. Program, print out, regress to the mean. And it's old oh, boys, can't you code it? <laughs> Program it right. Nothing ever happens in the In this video, I continue with our my series on using Stata to create visualizations of your data. And the particular graphic we're going to look at today are bar charts. Bar charts are very similar to, or have a similar syntax to the uh, box and whiskers plots we looked at in another video. And I'm going to use the same variable so you'll begin to see the commonality in Stata commands across different types of graphics. So if you, if you would like to, you could go now and look at the box and whiskers video first. And I'm going to use almost the exact same examples here. As you can see, I've already got Stata fired up. I've loaded a subset of variables for the general social survey. So let's go ahead and look at our first bar chart. I'm going to look at the variable real R inc, which is the respondents income in real dollars. I've restricted my data set to a subset of 2012. First, let's just go ahead and run the summarize command and see what this variable looks like. The thing that I'm uh, looking for here so I can demonstrate what a, a bar chart does, a bar graph does, is to look at the mean. You can see that the arithmetic average of this income variable is about $27,581. When I make my bar chart, you'll see that the syntax is very simple, very similar to the box and whiskers plot. It's graph bar, and then I follow that with my dependent variable, and then I'm going to use some options, and the option here, I'm just going to give this graph a name, and I'll call it bar1, and again, the sub option, the replace sub option, uh, allows Stata to write over this graph if it happens to exist. Now I've never explained why I do this but the reason I add that name in the bar, uh, sorry the name in the replace is that um, when I'm when I start making my graphics I usually start with the simplest graphic possible like this one. This is a simple default just take all the defaults. I'm gonna go work through and add things like titles and labels and tick marks and all sorts of things to, for my final graphic and so I'm going to be writing over that graph uh, quite frequently because I like to add these things one new element at a time to test it to see that it works. Debugging your programs when you make 10 changes, you don't know which of the 10 changes, if it was one of the 10 or all of the 10 that makes your program fail. So I tend to add them one at a time. Let's go ahead and look at this uh, graph bar. Uh, I like to execute these commands when they're in my window, in my editor window here by highlighting the command and then I just come up and come up to the uh, execute selection button and click on it. Now this bar chart, move it over just a hair, is not very impressive and in this sense it's very similar to the box and whiskers plot that uh, typically a bar graph really serves you better when you use categorical variables to compare averages across those those uh, categories. So here we only have we don't have any category we just have we're just displaying the average. And when I say displaying the average what I mean here is that the height of the bar is equal to the arithmetic average. So again when I ran the summarize command we found out that the average income was about twenty seven thousand five hundred eighty one dollars and you can see here that the height of this bar is exactly that amount. So let's go ahead and close this window and look at a little more complicated example. Now we can use that over construct that we used for the box and whiskers to produce some really interesting kinds of graphics. I'm gonna first before I do that I'm gonna run my tab stat command which will produce averages I'll produce the averages of real R inc, but I'll do it by the marital status variable. You'll probably remember the marital status variable has five discrete categories. Married, widowed, separated, divorced, and never married. So there we go. There we get our averages. Average income for married people is uh, almost $36,000. Average income for widowed people is almost $13,000 and so forth. On line 8, you'll see that I'm going to execute my graph bar command for that real R inc, but now I'm using the over sub option, so I should get bars for each of those categories, and the height of those bars should be equal to the numbers that I got in tab stat. And there we go. So, you know, this is a nice technique for comparing averages of a continuous variable across discrete categories. 
Let's go on and look at a couple of different examples um, using other variables. Well, I've changed my subset of data from the general social survey. I've now restricted my sample to the year 2006 and I've, I've got a couple of different variables. My first variable is age when the respondent was first married. So this is a number that ranges typically from 18 to about 89 and it has, uh, so a person says that they were 25 years old when they were first married, another person says they were 50 years old and so forth. I'm also going to include a variable called divorce. Divorce is a dichotomous variable and, it, and respondents replied whether they had uh, ever been divorced or had never been divorced. And then I'm going to keep the variable and use the variable sex, which simply measures male versus female. So if you look at line 14 of my program, I'm going to issue the graph bar command. I'll use the age wed variable, my continuous variable. So that's the variable that we'll, we will be, that Stata will calculate averages using. And I'm going to do this over divorce and over sex. So remember, this will now break our, our, our data set into kind of subsets by the divorce variable, by the sex variable. Since there's two divorce categories, or two categories for the variable divorce, and two categories for the variable sex, this should produce four bars. And they will be in a particular order determined by, this, by the uh, order of the over options. Because I had the divorce variable listed first as, a, as an over, you can see that that's the inner bars so that my my minor grouping is whether they're divorced or not and it's labeled in that graphic as yes and no because sex was the second overstatement that's my major grouping and so I have males on the left females on the right and within male whether they've ever been divorced yes or never been divorced no and then same thing for the females if I change the order of those two overstatements it's going to change which is the major category, the major grouping category, and which is the minor grouping category. So I do this in line 15. I'm going to let me highlight this line and produce this graphic. And we can put them side by side. And you can see that it's producing the same bars. The height of the bars are the same. The only thing that's different is the ordering. On the left, major category is male, female. On the right, it's whether they've ever been divorced or never been divorced. My minor grouping on the left is the divorce variable, and my minor grouping on the right is my sex variable. Which one you use is up to the story you're telling. I tend to put bars close to each other for better comparisons. So for example, if I'm making a male-female comparison, if that's the important component of my statistical story that I'm trying to tell, then I would use the graphic on the right. Like the box and whiskers plot, we can use the as y variable uh, option. And in line 16, I'm doing that. So line 16 is the same uh, command as the one in line 15, except you'll see at the end I've added the abbreviated version of this option called ASY. And what that's going to do is take the first over option and treat it as if it were a dependent variable. In other words, it's like I, it's as if I had one variable that measured the age wed for women and one variable that measured the age wed for men. And instead of age wed, I would have two variables. And Stata will do this automatically. And there are times when you want to do this to open up a little space on your graph to get a cleaner look. Let's go ahead and see what this option produces. So instead of having this major category now, um, we've the major category is is still there, okay? But now we're putting these bars together by gender. We'll have more control over the gaps on these bars. See, they're pushed together here, and you can control just about every part of this kind of graph. By the time we get to the end of this video, I'll show you a graphic that I think looks pretty nice that puts together a lot of these elements. If we don't like the labeling of our graph. For example, the, def, the, def, if the with the version of the general social survey that I'm doing, if you look at the sex variable, it's labeled as males and females, and maybe I prefer men and women. The divorce variable is simply yes or no, and maybe I prefer to have something like divorced or never divorced. I'll open up this window just a little bit so you can see here more. Now, I'm going to execute this command, 
And you'll notice that so that this fits on the screen and I can go across multiple lines, I've wrapped my entire command in that pound delimit semicolon and pound delimit CR uh, block. And so that Stata believes my command begins at the G in graph and ends at the last uh, close parentheses in the replace in the name statement in line 24. The semicolon in a, in a, for Stata acts like the end of a command or end of a sentence, if you will, if you like to think of this as writing uh, sentences. When I, and as I mentioned in another video, it's difficult, it was difficult for me anyways, to find out how to relabel these, these uh, uh, groups. So this is a good uh, thing to write down and keep in the back of your mind so when you come back to produce graphics, you have a bit more control over the output. The trick to this is that you, you can't just put a relabel option anywhere in bar graph. The relabel option is technically a sub-option used in the over statement. And in a way this makes sense. If you're going to say over sex, then anything that has to do with that sex variable ought to be dealt with in that over statement. So if you look at line 22, you'll see that my uh, first option is over sex. And then after, after the word sex is a comma, so that um, over is a sub-option to graph bar, and then relabel is a sub-option to over. And you'll see that I've relabeled 1 to equal men and 2 to equal women. This required that I know something about the data, and I do know the GSS data very well, and when I look at the sex variable, I know that men are equal to 1 and women are equal to 2. I do the same thing for the divorced variable right underneath it. Uh, the, if, if a person is coded 1 on the divorce label, it means they have been divorced at some time in their life. And if they're coded 2, it means they've never been divorced. And again, I'm going to use my uh, name statement in line 24 uh, just to give this graphic a name. Let's go ahead and run this block by highlighting it and clicking on the Execute Selection button. So same graphic we've had. The height of the bars are equal to the averages. I've just added a little bit better labeling for these, uh, for my groupings of my categorical variables. One of the things about graph bar that's very powerful, while the default is to display the height of the bars as an average of a variable, you can display any number of statistics. And if you look at the graphic that's shown on the screen now, those are all the kinds of statistics that you can show. For example, if you, if you have a highly skewed distribution, maybe the average is misleading and you'd rather use the 50th percentile or the median. Maybe you'd like to look at the variability of your, compare the variability of your distributions and the height of the bar could be set to either something like the interquartile range, the distance between the first and third quartiles, the middle 50% of your distribution of a variable, or maybe you prefer to display the height of the bars as equal to the standard deviation. In the example I'm going to show you down below, I'm going to produce a graphic where I've added an option in line 30 where in parentheses it says P75. P75 is one of the statistics picked out of that, that list that I just showed you. This is for the 75th percentile. So again, this graphic is going to be exactly the same as the graphic before, except the height of the bar will be equal to the 75th percentile and not equal to the arithmetic average. And there's our two graphics side by side. The graphic on the left, height of the bars is equal to the average, and that's the default in Stata. The graph on the right, the height of the bars is equal to the 75th percentile for each of these groups, and that's an option that I selected by, by picking a particular statistic. So we'll close this up and look at one last example. You don't have to go through all of these uh, options. Um, I just want to show you this graphic and show you the kinds of you know, end results that you can get with Stata. And I hope to cover a lot of different options for polishing your, your visualizations in another video. But I will say that, uh, first of all, I'm going to produce a bar graph here. And I'm going to use the same overs we've been using, and they'll be relabeled. I'm going to make it uh, use the as y variable option, and I'm going to increase the bar gap a little bit. I'm also going to push the legend around and do a few other things. Let's see what this graphic looks like. 
that's a relatively clean, sparse looking or uncluttered looking graphic. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Notice I've taken the legend that's produced by the uh, ASY option and put it inside the graph region. There was just enough room to tuck it in there, which allows the bars to be a little bit bigger. I've got a nice note added to this graphic telling me the source of my data, which I think is very important. And uh, all in all, not, not too bad of a graphic. The last thing to tell you, but I won't give you an example, is that while I've shown you bar graphs here, there are also horizontal bar graphs. And the command is very simple. Just simply substitute graph bar with graph h bar, and it will take that uh, the axes and swap them. And sometimes that produces a nicer looking uh, graphic. For example, your dependent variable, the thing you're averaging, will be shown along the x-axis. And uh, you know sometimes it's just easier to make comparisons across groups when you're looking along a number line. I hope you found this video useful. And if you have any questions, please contact me and I'll do my best to answer them. Edits code in the day to give the keyboard a punch. Then cross correlate and a break for some lunch. Correlate, tabulate, process, and screen. Program, print out, regress to the mean. And it's old boys, can't you code it? Program it right. Nothing ever happens in.